Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known. If you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and listening, and we have a lot of news tonight. And I wanted to also brief some people on a few things, but I think we better get started, first of all, with what's going on in Israel. Uh, When I posted this, there was a threat, but the threat has turned real. In fact, it turned real basically just after I posted for the show. Uh, Larry, how are you doing up there? Oh, just pulling out the longer binoculars. Got to look all the way to Israel. What? Uh, just before the show began, you had another alert. What's happening? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I called you this evening. I think it was about uh, 3 o'clock or later, and uh, my phone had lit up like a Christmas tree with uh, rocket attack warnings in Israel. And then since then, uh, we've... Uh, matter of fact, a minute about a minute before we just got on this show, more rocket attacks were ringing on my phone, giving me those alerts. And uh, Hal Turner, you know, if you want to comment, go ahead, and then I'll read what Hal Turner's got, or you can. No, go ahead. Go ahead and read it. Okay. Uh, Hal Turner posted also to just verify what was going off in my phone this evening. Uh, it says, massive rocket barrages hitting Israel from Gaza. That sudden and massive barrage of rockets launched against Israel from inside the Gaza Strip. There's many rockets in attempt to overwhelm Israel's Iron Dome defenses. Uh, following rocket barrage, Israel uh, air attacks against targets in Gaza Strip. And then, uh, just as the show started, more rocket alerts. So they're firing back and forth. You know, Stuart. I just simply can't see how much longer Israel can keep taking this and not go in. Well, that's that's what I think. And then I read an article. Uh, see if I can find it real quick. You know, when you want to find something, you can't. But it was about uh, Iran giving uh, Israel, or not Israel, but um, GPS uh, ability to put on their, their rockets so that they can have uh, uh, accuracy and they can pinpoint where they want them to go. And I thought, well, you know, uh, can Israel wait for that to happen? I mean, it just doesn't seem like uh, anybody would want to wait for that. Got any comments on that one? Well, I would just have to say we know, we do know from the previous show we did that uh, Israel has, uh, you know, tanks and armor on the border. Now, they haven't sent them in, but uh, that could literally happen this weekend if things change, and it appears there's a a slugfest, if you will, going on between uh, Gaza and Israel at the moment. Rockets coming from one direction and uh, the Israeli Air Force attacking the source of those rockets. So, you know, as a matter of fact, Stuart, this rocket attack just now started a few minutes ago. I guess uh, this began... Uh, tonight, really, basically on on their Sabbath, you know, and so it's very interesting. I, I just don't know that uh, Israel will stand off much longer. I, it'll really be something to watch this weekend to see what happens. Well, if uh, if Iran is going to send Hamas and the rest of those guys uh, GPS things, and I guess what they do is they can attach them almost instantly onto rockets so that they can pinpoint. Uh, you know, cities, and then rather than just fire them off and hope they hit something, they'd be able to hit something with a relatively pinpoint accuracy. I can't imagine that Israel's going to stand by and allow that to happen. And here we are coming up on the uh, 27th, which to me is a very, very key date of something. I can't tell anybody what it's a key date for, but I just have this awful feeling that... uh, Something is going to be occurring here within the next couple of days or over the weekend through November that's not going to be good for the world or for the United States insofar as that goes. 
And um, remember that prophecy we read from that lady, and she talked about the third wave attack, and she said it's preparing or has already started. Israel will take matters into her own hands and do a preemptive strike bombing sites in the country north of her, so that would probably be Syria maybe, more than one location will be hit by the Israelis. Uh, and it will take the world, she claimed, by surprise. Now that might be taking out of Damascus, uh, because that's in Isaiah chapter 17, and that appears to be a preemptive attack, so I don't know if that's what she's talking about or not. But uh, they have been amassing, have they not, more and more military equipment along the Gaza Strip, as I understand it. But they haven't invaded yet. What, what do you what, what do you make out of that? Well, that's very true, and it's it's odd that they're holding off, having the armor and the tanks and troops already there. Uh, whether it's the Trump peace deal that he's trying to work out, which don't appear to be that accurate for the moment, uh, you know, I don't know. But but I do know one thing. Uh, they, they have, uh, according to a number of sources, uh, Israel has been training some pilots uh, with the Greece Air Force in Greece. And ironically, Stuart, I don't know if you saw my post, but there was a 6.8 magnitude earthquake struck uh, the Ionian Sea in Greece. Uh, you know, early this morning, and mm-hmm. uh, that's kind of ironic because Israel and Greece are both training right now, and what they're training is for long-range runs. So that makes me consider: Are they training to attack Iran? Well, sooner or later they have to, or sooner or later Iran has to preempt, and that's Daniel eight. We're on the verge, I think, of this whole thing igniting uh, with the caravan coming up, which is really a military operation disguised as uh, what they have it as now on the the radio and TV. But it's really a military operation, and I don't know what Trump's going to do about it. We can get into that later. But um, it seems like everybody's gearing up for war. And... We know this is planned because Albert Pike, in his uh, dissertations on three world wars that were going to bring in the new world order, the, the first two world wars were fought exactly as he outlined, and it appears that the third world war has already begun, and that's exactly as he has outlined it would begin. So it's just a question, I guess, of timing. Don't you think? It's hard, yeah. hard to tell, I guess, what they what they have figured out for the timing. But the Lord does know what the timing is. Yeah, and by the way, if you can't tell, my phone's lit up again like a Christmas tree. There's a pretty good barrage of rockets apparently being fired on Israel. So th- maybe the war has begun. I mean, the timing is perfect. For a 926, 920, well, they're already into, uh, aren't they already into 927? I think I over there? They, yeah, I suppose they are, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that's matter about of fact, right. Sir, uh, yeah, this is the beginning of their Sabbath uh, on 927. Uh, that's you know, right. When it turns dark over there. So, yeah, they're in 927 already. And it's a Sabbath. Uh, folks, something is something is uh, all this is being orchestrated. Let me word it that way. All this is orchestrated. Uh, before we get into some more here, let me just read a couple of things. I read to you the Rothschild Manifesto, which a lot of people didn't even know existed. Uh, I read to you the Communist Manifesto. These are short forms. These are one bullet lines to condense two or three or even two pages of what they plan to do. Here's another one, though. And and this is what we, as American citizens, are really up against. And um, it's, it's not pleasant, but people need to be informed as to what's really going on and what's happening. This one is called the Humanist Manifesto. 
you have to remember that the New World Order does not really have a religion other than a, a humanist religion. They worship man. One, break up of the established order so that the new order can be put into its place. So what we're watching in Israel, what we're watching over here, what we're watching with the war games going on everywhere, this is all planned because they need to break up the established global order in order to bring in the new order. Okay, number two, the abolishment of national sovereignty. Well, what is the uh, what has Trump said about the border? He said, if you don't have a border that you can enforce, you don't have a country. And that's why the deep left communists want to abolish all borders. Uh, Because there is no national sovereignty then. It all is supposed to go under the United Nations, which is number three. The establishment of a one-world government. Larry, uh, have you heard any more about the U.N. troops uh, assisting or U.N. personnel assisting in the uh, uh, caravan, so to speak? I know I read an article where they said something like 40 or 50 U.N. people were down there already. Well, I I was watching today, Stuart, and uh, watching some of the images coming out of Mexico. And, of course, I've been reading the reports how the U.N. is so deeply involved in the caravan situation and working with Mexico and the other countries, especially in Mexico. And I actually uh-huh. saw U.N. vehicles in Mexico uh, with the uh, uh, police vehicles in Mexico, and they were appeared to be assisting the caravan on its way to the U.S.A. From what I could yep. tell, they were taking care of them and helping them on their way. So, this does, Stuart, appear to be a U.N. organized movement involving George Soros and others to really uh, just nullify our borders and take our country. Yep. Yep. This is the United Nations, folks. The United Nations, is, as I've said before, is a communist charter operation. It's a communist operation from start to finish. It was designed to take uh, the sovereignties away from the nations. Most people do not are not aware, actually, that we are already implementing Agenda 21, parts of Agenda 20, uh, 30, and then they have another agenda uh, called 50. And that is what uh, Obama and the Pope, when they shook hands on 923 back in 2015, they did so at 923 in the morning. And there's a reason why they timed it for that. Uh, But this is the implementation of the program. It it doesn't look like that, but that's actually what's going on. And uh, that's that's their one goal. Then the next goal is the abolition of the free enterprise system. Now, this is where Trump gets in the way of what they wanted to do. Trump is a multimillionaire if he's not a multibillionaire. Uh, Under this new system, he will lose it all. And so he has a personal interest in what he's trying to do. And and as I've said before, the difference between Trump, who really is a globalist, but he wants the sovereignty of the nations to remain intact, whereas people like George Soros and the deep state communists, uh, they want the nation's sovereignties to be dissolved and handed over to the United Nations. So I get into that because that's part of biblical prophecy. Okay, so the establishment of a one-world economy. I don't know if all of you have seen the, uh, the cover of the uh, Economist magazine, which is a Rothschild magazine, where they said they were going to bring in a global currency by 2018. In order to probably do that, you'd have to collapse the stock market. There are several ways they can do it. They can do it by derivatives, or they can do it by just simply uh, vacating, uh, how do I word this, manipulating the stock market. We just lost another 200 and some odd points today, and Monday I would be very careful to see what happens on Monday 
if we haven't already had a major earthquake or some other major disaster that's occurred over the weekend. Uh, but however, this uh, 411, this uh, the date that we've been looking at, and the uh, World Series may have more to do with Israel than it does us. Anyway, the other thing is the destruction of the American Republic and the institution of a full democracy. How many of our leaders in Washington have you heard say we're a republic? You probably count them on one finger. All of them use the term we're democracy. No, we're not. We are a republic. Big, huge difference between a democracy and a republic. Don't want to get into that right now. The institution of a world court. And Larry, wasn't it um, Pompeo or Bolton or somebody said we were not going to have anything more to do with the world court? Remember that? That was only like a week ago or two. Yeah, well, yeah, Stuart, that was uh, actually Bolton and also uh, Nikki Haley at the UN because uh, they the the world group was wanting to take uh, Salman before a world court about Khashoggi. Uh, being killed, you know, in Turkey. And what's interesting, mm-hmm. Stuart, is, you know, it's interesting to ask the question of the media that's going crazy over one journalist killed in Turkey. Uh, it, you wonder, well, what happened to all the news about the 16 journalists killed this year in Mexico? Yes, <laughs> I know. The whole thing is uh, tipsy-turvy, and, and as the Bible says, black becomes white, white becomes black, good becomes evil, evil becomes good. Uh, we're, we're in that era of time now where uh, all you see is lies out there. The Bible is the only book you have that's going to guide you through it, and unfortunately our church leaders and a good share of the prophetic people don't even know who America is. In fact, they deny who America is. If you don't know who the players are, you can't understand what's happening around you. Anyway, the next one, a redistribution of the world's wealth. Well, that's actually been going on now for some time through various programs. The abolition of any religion based upon the concept of a personal and a holy God. That came right out of the Vatican. Um, You can only go through the Vatican. You cannot go seek out any, uh, how do I say this, personal relationship with a personal God. Right out of the mouth of the Pope. Said you can't do that. It's dangerous. You've got to go through him if you want to, uh, if you want uh, salvation. Anyway, number 10, instead of prayer and worship, a social gospel. Well, that's forming right under our nose through the Internet. Establishment of a one-world religion based upon reason, science, and truth, and not superstition. Well, I guess you can figure that one out. There are no unique religious emotions or attitudes, or to word it another way, the unification of all religions into one which is the worship of humanity. Number 13, evolution is the truth. Creationism is a lie. There's your reversal. Man, number 14, man needs complete realization of his human potential. And the last one, all mankind has a right to birth control, abortion, divorce, homosexuality, or any other perversion as long as it does not harm anyone. So you can see where this is going. And this is just one more of very, very powerful people that have taken over government. And this is what they're implementing. This is what the United States is up against. This is what America is up against. This stuff is being taught in our universities. It's being taught in our high schools. It's being taught in uh, grade school, and probably even in kindergarten. They do it very, very subtly. They bring in these little tiny ideas that match with what I just read you. And this is where we're at. 
And this invasion, and this is what it is, absolutely it's an invasion, uh, it's just part of this whole thing coming down upon around our ears. And I think it's going to accelerate from now on. Um, what do you think, Larry, when you hear that? Well, it, it's, uh, it's really an interesting scenario. Uh, you know, of course, we know that Trump is calling in the military and, and apparently uh, possibly considering a, a border ban for apparently all uh, immigrants. Uh, now, we know that uh, the uh, liberal courts are just waiting to pounce on that one. And uh, but the interesting thing is, is uh, I've watched uh, on Lou Dobbs and and other, you know others, uh, mm-hmm. some people that have literally from Fox that have been down in the migrant regions, and they are saying that Guatemala is is uh, is uh, saying that they even have found ISIS mixed amongst those people and removed some of them, but they're not all South Americans and Mexicans. There's a lot of foreign nationals mixed in and uh, a lot of MS-13 gang members are in there even though the mainstream media is telling everybody Trump's crazy when he says that uh, it's been verified the mainstream media simply won't print it and they stand against it and it's sad Stuart that the mainstream media has become a political arm of the deep state government and the Democrats yeah yeah, it's it's um, it's it's part of the communist insurgency, and um, it's it's going to continue. And I believe that uh, Daniel the prophet says that that is actually what's going to take place. And uh, if the prophecies are correct, and I believe they are, it's more important that the, uh, the uh, interpretations, I guess one could say, are correct. <laughs> That's more important, but. When it really comes right down to it, yeah, there is a lot of trouble coming, and uh, the United Nations is definitely, I believe, going to win uh, in the end. In fact, this is probably what's really going on right now, right under our noses, and we just don't realize it as to what's really happening down there. Uh, and uh, What do you think is going to, what's your estimate on what's really going to happen? When they arrive here at the border, do you think Trump is actually going to try and stop them, or are they going to be allowed to come across with some excuse or another? No matter what he does, he's going to be wrong. Yeah, uh, I would just have to say that yesterday I was watching one of the officials of the Border Patrol, and that official, uh, when they were talking on uh, a Lou Dobbs program, readily admitted that uh Homeland Security, which is over them and directing them, that they've been directed to catch and release still. In other words, when they come in, take them and, and, and uh, release them. And uh, Lou Dobbs asked him, said, well, don't you, don't you know the president said, no, they're not coming? And he said, well, we have to do what Homeland Security tells us. And they said, well, who's, who's telling you that? And he says, that Nielsen woman, you know, the, uh, the director that Trump appointed over Homeland Security is saying, we're not going to stop them. And so uh, also there's been a lot of talk that uh, Homeland Security is defying Trump in the backgrounds uh, and saying that the military cannot be used to stop them either. But we've got a head-on, Stuart. Uh, either Trump is going to have the sufficient authority to give the orders or simply this is a coup and no matter what he says, they won't do it. And so we're we're in a we're in a crossroads, Stuart. America is either going to take a stand or go down. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. And unfortunately, it, even if he takes a stand and let's say he uses military force to keep him out, the left communist left is going to be screaming their heads off, and then we probably have riots everywhere. In every major city, there will be huge riots, and uh, then, of course, they can bring in martial law. The United Nations has to come up somehow, one way or the other, for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled. Let me read part of uh, Daniel chapter 7. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast 
dreadful and terrible, strong exceedingly. It had great iron teeth in it. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. It was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Now, normally you would think he's talking about past history when he says before it, but if you look up the word, it actually means standing in front of the other beast powers. You have the lion, you have the eagle's wings, uh, uh, lion with the eagle's wings, you have uh, uh, the bear and, and the leopard and all these beasts that come up. Okay, so then uh, he asks, well, what does all this mean? Now, what's interesting is, that thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, and it shall be diverse from all kingdoms and should devour the whole earth, tread it down, break it in pieces. This is your new world order. This is the Communist Manifesto. This is the Rothschild Manifesto, the Humanist Manifesto. That's the plan. Okay, but it says it's diverse from all kingdoms. The United Nations is not a nation. It's not a kingdom. The United Nations is only an organization. It gets all of its power by treaties it makes with all the other nations. And that's where it gets its power from. And United Nations peacekeepers are everywhere. They're, uh, they're all over the place. In fact, people have been videotaping military-type vehicles that the United Nations has in the United States, thousands upon thousands of them. You might remember that Henry Kissinger said that a time was coming in America when the American people would welcome UN peacekeeping troops. Well, that ought to tell you what the what the <laughs> what the plan is and how they tend to do it. And when the UN rises up into full power, it will have all the armaments, all the technology, and everything it needs. Who can make war with the beast is what Jesus warned us about. And guess where the United Nations is? So here we go. And it says the ten horns out of this kingdom, United Nations, are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. There's a lot of argument over what that means. But what is not an argument, I don't believe, is that the Club of Rome divided the entire world up into ten bioregions. Each region has a king over it. I find that a little odd because it fulfills this prophecy. And if you go into the United Nations Meditation Room, ten chairs, one each for the ten kings, and then an eleventh chair... For Antichrist. I mean, it's all right here in front of our face. This is what we're watching. We're watching a UN engineered takeover. And how this is going to work at the border, I don't know if it makes much difference in a way. Do you think, Larry, because no matter what he does, he's going to be wrong? Yeah, not only is he going to be wrong, Stuart. Uh, they've already blamed him for either way it goes, but at the same time, this recent uh, the mail bomb thing, even though they yes. caught the man, everybody's blaming Trump. You know, like he did it. You know, and uh, so the, that's their method of operation is to blame Trump until they can impeach him and taking him out of office, which they plan on doing quickly. Uh, it, it, it's very interesting. Matter of fact, it brings back to mind uh, some of Stan Dale's warnings about where this may be going. Yeah. Uh, very, very interesting, too, what actually happened with this thing. Uh, I'm very, very suspicious. Obviously, I think it's a false flag. That's that conspiratorial mind. They always have a patsy. They always have somebody that's got a record, usually. Um before they, you know, roll this thing out. But what I'm interested in, and, and you were a police detective for years, why would a guy 
do this knowing full well he was going to get caught. I mean, he did everything that he could to leave a, um, a trail so that they could find him right away. And I just find that really, really odd. Why would you do that? And now I understand he's a Republican, or at least that's what well, they're saying. Yeah, uh, actually they're saying actually they're saying that he was on the terror watch list, and they've handled him before for threatening presidents. But what's interesting, he was he appeared to be living and going everywhere in this van, which turned out to be a very high profile van with Trump data all over it. And uh, they say Trump's face is on it. I didn't see that, but they say it is. And uh, you know, it's so interesting that uh, it's like he wanted to be caught. Because that was part of the plan. So, what would be his motive for being caught? Uh, I know he was living in the van. Maybe he just wanted three hots and a cot. <laughs> you know, who knows? But it seems to me that somebody put him up to this. So that's the, that's well, the question: is who put him up to it? Or well, did sure. he just doesn't he, re- doesn't he really fit the profile pretty much of a Manchurian candidate? Yes, it does. Yep, yep, it does. And, uh, you know, they're getting very, very good at this. When I was uh, in my flying career, I did a trip with uh, a group called the Yes from Great Britain. And uh, I learned a lot about mind control, basically, from one of the, the lead guitarists. His name was Steve Howe at the time. I don't know. If, I doubt if he's with them anymore. I'm not even sure Yes even exists anymore. But he used to come up and sit in the jump seat and talk to us. And one of the things he said was that when you have a group of maybe 20,000, 30,000 people that you're playing your songs to, that you only have maybe 20 seconds to 30 seconds or less to grab that whole group, all this diverse people, and mold them into one entity. And they do it through the music. Well, it's sort of a mind control thing. That reminds me of Tavistock and these other mind control groups where they've studied human psychology and they know exactly how to do it. And that's exactly what Hitler did. He memorizes people. Obama can memorize people, um, you know. Uh, so it's it's very, very interesting how to mesmerize a group and bring them into one. And he told me, he said, I'm not playing or the band is not playing to 30,000 or 25,000 people. He said, we're playing to one spirit. And we manipulate that one spirit throughout an entire good concert. And that was amazing to hear that. Uh, So, you know, this is where we're headed. And we're using major media now to do that. You know, how would people even believe CNN, for example? Why do people even believe them? Why do they even turn them on? Well, a lot of this is mind control. You're being programmed. And, uh, of course, Jesus Christ came along and really upset the apple cart 2,000 years ago and said, i got a way to deprogram you if you'll do it. You'll really be deprogrammed, and you'll understand what's really going on on planet Earth. Unfortunately, few people do it, but um, that's the way this thing works. It's amazing how you can program people, and that's exactly what's happening here in the United States. And they have now divided, I believe, and Larry, I think you'd agree with this, we have now a left, and we have a right. And that's it. And it's Divide and conquer. And remember when Jesus said that a nation would rise up against nation, well, the word is actually ethnos, ethnic group against ethnic group. And you can extend that, religious group against religious group, political group against political group, um, class group against class group. In other words, you simply divide the nation up into different segments, each fighting each other, and then the the whole nation implodes. 
because they're fighting each other. They're not paying attention to what's going on outside them. Meanwhile, you got guys like Putin out there who are arming themselves to the teeth, ready to pounce when the going is good. How close do you think we are to that, Larry? I think we're getting awfully close. The warnings of of Putin have been out there now for a couple of years. Well, they have, and, and uh, of course, uh, right now, you know, you mentioned uh, wondering why this was happening to Israel at the, this moment that they were firing those rockets again. It could be because uh, there's, the enemies of America smell blood in the in the air, and now mm-hmm. they're deciding it's maybe time to pounce on Israel. And I can guarantee you, Russia and China and Iran and North Korea are watching America. If they think Trump's going down, they liable to strike. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Do you suppose the taking of, of uh, Babylon, America, is very close? We get a lot of emails over the years saying, you nuts. There's no way that America's Babylon. Well, unfortunately it is. And the enemies that are mentioned as being enemies of Babylon are in exact location the Bible says they are. A confederation of nations to the north. Well, all you got to do is draw a line from America up over the poles to the other side of the earth, and guess where you land? A confederation of nations uh, under the, uh, basically, I think, under the control still of uh, of uh, Putin and his group. And he did warn. Remember, Larry, when he warned, World War Three is inevitable. Going to happen. Well, well here we are. It really, <laughs> yeah, I find it interesting, Stuart, and I'd like your comment on this. What are the odds that uh, there is a meeting already scheduled by Bolton and Lavrov between Trump and Putin in Paris, France, on 11-11? Uh, yeah. The, I know a lot of people don't like like it when I use numbers. The Lord uses numbers all the time, and he uses them for a very good reason. That's one of his uh, ways of identifying what's really happening around you. Let me read you Jeremiah 51, just uh, verse 8. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her pain. If so, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her. Let us go, everyone, into his own country. For the judgment reaches unto heaven, is lifted up, even to the skies. Now that's the final end, basically, of America Babylon. But here's what happens before that. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. There you go. What are we watching? What's been going on along our borders for the last, what, 30 years? Infiltration. Infiltration. So Larry was telling us last night about a plan where the ones that are already here, you want to reiterate that, Larry, for the people listening, are going to line up against those that are uh, the military? Yeah, that's uh, basically some entail that came out of Hal Turner and he indicated some top people have warned him that uh, the embeds that are already here, the illegals already in America, are waiting for the mass uh, move on the border by the ones coming up in the caravans and uh, if, you know, and I'm not telling people to believe this, I'm just saying this is the warnings that are coming out is that they are going to attack from behind the police and the military, and and uh, well, I guess you could say assassinate them. They'll be they'll be doing what they have run a few plans on against police, shooting them in the back, like Dallas, Texas. So, in other words, the the march up to the north may be uh, the trigger event where the Lord says they shall lift up a shout against thee. And if you go into Isaiah, it says there'll be mischief in all the cities and trouble everywhere, and I guess that's where we're coming to fairly soon. 
But it's going to be interesting to see what Trump actually does. Uh, And what's your take on the election? Let's just say that all of this backfires on the deep state and it's a red wave where the Republicans virtually take over everything with huge majorities. What's the deep state going to do at that point? They're not going to let go. (laughs) Yeah, I would have to say, Stuart, they will be more... If you thought you saw something when Trump won, boy, this will be double that effect. They will go berserk because they'll know that it's the final nail in their coffin, so to speak, if he stays in office. And uh, they can't control any of the Congress or the, you know, I'll tell you what, it'll be chaos, absolute chaos. But, you know, but on the other hand, if they win, if there's a blue wave of a sort and they win the House, then they're going to be nothing but a civil. That's what many are saying now. Uh, Pat Buchanan and Gingrich and, and, you know, a number of them are saying now we are watching a civil war in progress. Yeah. Yeah, well, kind of, I think, ruler against ruler. Uh, yeah. here, here it is in uh, Jeremiah 51, verse 46. Lest your heart faint, and you fear for a rumor that shall be heard in the land. The rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year comes a rumor. And violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Uh, boy, do we have ruler against ruler. The only thing that remains now is violence in the land. Uh, which some interpret to mean unjust gain, where they come in and just take everything. Well, the U.N. has already said that you cannot have private property. So they're going to just seize it and take it away. So, you know, what? as I said last night, what is awaiting the American people for their apostasy and their rejection of the Lord that gave them all the blessings that America has? Those blessings don't come from our own hands. Those blessings come from the Lord, who says, look, if you will go out and work and you will uh, obey me and and you will uh, pay attention to what I've told you, then I will bless the work you do. But if you won't, you will go out and work all day and toil all night, and you will get nowhere. And I will debase your currencies. I will debase everything you do until you are all dead. And this is about where we are. Folks, look up Deuteronomy chapter 28. And although it it is addressed basically to Israel, it is addressed to also every nation in the world, that if they will follow what the Lord has told them, they will be blessed. But if they don't, they will be cursed. And unfortunately, America has inherited almost all the curses. And one of those curses is that the rich men of the earth come in and take control over the uh, financial uh, aspects of a nation. Central banking, Federal Reserve. Um, The market went down, as I said earlier. We're headed for a crash, a crash unlike anything that's ever been seen before. And um, it's just too bad that people don't don't realize what's really, you know, what's really happening, Larry. They they don't realize that there really is a God and He really does have an agenda, and He means to fulfill it. And He sent His Son, and people have rejected it, and they say, "Well, it's just some stupid old blood religion," and it's deadly religion, and who should pay any attention to it? But here's a weird one for you, Larry. The stock market crash of 1929. Now, that's interesting because you add that across, it's 21 or 777. But guess when it occurred? It culminated on October 29th, 89 years ago. Huh. Isn't that interesting when you go to the World Series and that earthquake a big quick, I think it's coming. No, it could be an economic collapse. Uh, it'll be interesting to watch the markets on Monday to see if they start to really go down. Because remember David Wilkinson said that the monetary system was going to go into um, 
a downward spiral that nobody could stop. And at near to well erstwhile Noise claimed that the stock market would go to zero. I can't comprehend wow. that one. No. In other words, it closes. Uh, that's deadly. And there was a lady that had a vision. Uh, I think I read a part of it today, but basically what she said was, maybe you saw it, maybe you're the one who sent it to me, uh, that it appeared that there had been an economic collapse and the banks were all closed, people were on their own, uh, the government really wasn't anywhere, uh, people were basically on their own just trying to survive. So it's hard to tell how the Lord is going to deal with us, but it's not going to be pleasant like Red Oak said. It's not going to be pleasant at all, folks. So, you know, Larry and I have been warning you people for years and a whole lot of others, you know, prepare. We're not the only ones. People have been warning this for years and years. Prepare as best as you can because um, we're in for some rough times, and they can come instantly. It's like sudden destruction. It's like the earthquake that took place in Candlestick Park. Nobody expected it. Just all of a sudden, bam, it was there. It's, I don't know if you go on YouTube, and I'm not sure how you find it, but I think it was ABC News that there is a video clip of what actually happened during that earthquake at Candlestick Park back in uh, 1989. And there they are talking about, I don't know, the baseball players and all that, and then suddenly they lose all the signal. It's just gone, bang, like that. And uh, things can happen that rapidly. <clears throat> anyway. What else have we got, Larry? I mean, other than well, Israel being probably blown off the face of the earth or an attempt to. Well, uh, uh, the interesting news is, and I thought of you when I saw it, uh, Barry Rothman's done a new tour code called Life on Mars, and he has found uh, Mars life and algae and, and et cetera, et cetera, and even the, word, the, the name of the man, Fletcher, that was instrumental in NASA, when the first images came in of uh, some green and, and, and wind and et cetera, et cetera, on Mars and a blue sky, uh, he's the one that actually made them adapt the, the sky to a, a reddish brown and the ground to more red. And so it's like, and I thought of you when, when I thought of that, I thought, well, you know, when Stuart was working with Tithonia and those yes. ancient buildings and some new ones and, here I was trekking around on Mars looking at life. <laughs> I met things on Mars. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, of course, I know that makes, you know, if somebody had never heard me talking about that, they'd probably think, well, he is nuts. But, uh, no. yeah, the Thor Code's right. <laughs> there is life on Mars, and uh, your uh, Typhonia is an exact example. Yeah, I, I, you know, it never, well, you called me just before I released it and said that's going to be a nothing <laughs> a nothing burger, which it basically was, and I, it's, there's still very little interest in it, even though Mars is going to play a very important role in the arrival and uh, people, and, and the backside of the moon as well. And people just don't, I don't know, it's, it's just amazing to me uh, what's going on. Did you see this article on... Uh, and I, I'm curious as to why they are releasing this now. This is um, was released on October 26th. The U.S. is one of the Earth's most volcanically active countries. Why would they be releasing that now? Well, the only think? thing I can think of, <laughs> we're having we're having uh, numbers of earthquakes. And they're shallow. I've told you about the ones in California, especially, and, and like uh, Montana today that was shallow. And a lot of them are just very shallow earthquakes. So, Stuart, maybe Dutch Sense and others has been warning of, of magma and earthquake activity. And Stan seems to think that we're very close to the earthquake activity on the West Coast. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, that stuff on um, uh, Vancouver Island. I remember there was a fellow, I don't know if you remember him or not, but 
he was given a vision. He thought it was going to take place much sooner than it had, but he said a series of earthquakes would strike just off Vancouver Island, and nobody would really pay that much attention to him. But then a huge quake was going to hit Vancouver and totally rearrange its skyline. And I'm beginning to wonder if this isn't what we're what we're watching now. Because well, the, uh, Dutch sense yeah. seemed to think that possibly there might be some volcanic activity under the ocean around there, and there's some rifts around there that seem to be splitting. And um, so it's... It, there are rifts developing everywhere, uh, big ones, not little ones. I mean, huge ones. And, of course, I'm, I, I believe that Stan is absolutely right, that the earth is actually expanding. I think the Bible says it expands. Uh, but here's uh, the volcanic threat assessment scores. U.S. volcanoes and their new assigned threat levels. Very low, 21, low, 34, moderate, 49, high, 39, and 18, very high. Now, you add that across, you got a lot of volcanoes. Wow. And, yeah. uh, you know, when, when the Bible says that Babylon burns, I doubt if it's fooling. Because we have a lot of methane and all kinds of stuff right under the ground and all we'd have to do when you read uh, jeremiah in the book of revelation it speaks of a uh, nuclear attack from probably not only all around uh, you know it comes in from the atlantic it comes in from the gulf it comes in from the pacific and over the poles and uh, it, jeremiah says that to, to telemetry of these missiles is expert. In other words, it hits its target. None miss. Absolutely none of those missiles miss. And uh, we're headed for that. If you want to find out, I believe, when, when America is going to get hit, you have to watch Israel, just like this lady in that prophecy said. Watch what happens to Israel. Because in Ezekiel 38:39, you're going to find the attack upon the United States. It's in there, and I think it's very, very obvious once you see it, but it's not obvious if you don't see it. And where it says that uh, Gog and, and the troops of Gog and Magog are uh, already upon the mountains of Israel. They're already invading Israel. In fact, with the way uh, Russia is now <laughs> encircling Israel, I'm surprised Israel hasn't... Uh, has been so cozy with Putin. What do you think, Larry? What What's going on there? I mean, they are circling uh, Israel. Yeah, I think that's why Israel knows that uh, they're not going to be able to just continue on much longer, uh, especially with the Russian influences, even on the northern Golan region. Uh they know that they're fixing to enter into a war, and, and a telling sign, as far as I'm concerned, is that now Jordan has taken back some of its uh, peace treaty uh, data uh, with Israel. So some, that shows something is about to change in that region for Abdullah of Jordan to remove himself, basically, from the peace treaty with Israel. Yeah, we've got all kinds of problems going on. I mean, it's... Uh, uh, it, I guess we can figure out later, but it seems to me you have to have a war to get the peace agreement rather than get a peace agreement and then have a war. So we'll just have to watch and monitor and see what happens. But this thing that's going on with Israel right now, folks, that can flare up uh, to such a degree. This war in Isaiah 17 is basically overnight. Uh, in the evening they were, but in the eve uh, in the morning they were not. That's uh, probably an eight-hour conflict in which this whole thing is settled for a little while anyway. Uh, it's just amazing how rapidly with high-tech weapons we have that a war can be triggered. And, I, I, you know, if the missile alarms keep going off, they're deadly serious in about launching hundreds and hundreds of missiles at them. Uh, so anyway, uh, keep your eyes tuned. We're coming up on the uh, 
bad times, it looks like to me. Uh, also, a headline here, Larry, we should mention, atmospheric radiation is increasing from coast to coast in the USA. Um, do you suppose that has anything to do with all the glitches and the phones and everything else? Well, it's entirely possible, but uh, Stan Dayo is indicating that uh, a lot of the sun activity is twisting our magnetic field, allowing all this radiation to come down. And it seems like our planet is really getting bombarded lately from radiation. Yeah. Uh, and I was reading an article where uh, two Iranian fast boats were kind of harassing a warship. Uh, this is just provocation after provocation after provocation. And eventually that has to go to war, doesn't it? Well, I, it does, and that's what concerns me now, Stuart, with the uh, with the deep state and the left so engaged in trying to undermine Trump, they do not apparently realize they are undermining everything around them, their families, their cities, their states. We're all at risk because they hate Trump more than they love America. Yeah, yeah, it's too bad. But then I guess one could say that fallen humanity is its own worst enemy. And we can't seem to do anything but fight and and argue and and uh, go to war. Uh, it's, it's too bad that people don't just stop. Take a look around and say, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. Jesus Christ told you what was wrong. And he told everybody how to fix it. Just too bad most people won't do it. <laughs> anyway, it's not for lack of attempting to tell people that there's a problem. And uh, I think this war that's coming, this great tribulation period, is really designed to show humanity who they really are, that even though they would not admit that they were a fallen creature, the depth of depravity that shows up in this last final phase of mankind's probation on the earth is the final witness to themselves that there's really something terribly wrong uh, with humanity. And Jesus was the fix, and they have rejected it basically out of hand and if they haven't rejected the messiah they've rejected how he told them to fix it so it you know it's it's just a shame to watch and you can warn and warn and warn and i've been warning for 30 years as you have i mean it and people are just falling away more and more and more it, it's it's like nobody's hearing it anymore what, what do you think <laughs> Yeah, I think you're exactly right. And by the way, the latest uh, from the Times of Israel, it says Lieberman says Israel has exhausted all options with Gaza crisis and that only a powerful blow uh, would be the way to stop Hamas terror groups now. So anyway, we'll just have to watch Stuart this weekend and see where this goes. If the rockets continue to fly, we may see some uh, you know, action, though that we don't want to see it. But it may be yeah. to really get serious over there this weekend or later in the first of the week. Well, we're at the right time. Uh, we, we're coming up on uh, sort of the end almost of uh, Tabernacles uh, at the proper time, uh, the biblical time, I should say, not when Israel celebrates it. But anyway, folks, heads up, uh, this war can go any time, and it'll get involved with Russia, and it'll get involved in the United States. It'll be over quickly, but a lot of things are going on right here in our own border. So it sounds like war and invasions and everything else, the world's coming apart. But anyway, you can hang on and get under the wings of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's your only salvation. There is no other. And uh, nor the name under the heavens by which anyone can be saved. Anyway, thanks a lot, Larry, for coming on. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, take care. Prepare if you haven't. And uh, we'll let you know as soon as we hear other news. So check our websites all the time. Thank you. Good night.